The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Revelation. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who was seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, Who are these robed in white and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one who that knows. Then he said to me, These are those who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb is at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. A reading from 1 John. 
See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When He is revealed, we will be like Him, for we will see Him as He is. And all who have this hope in Him purify themselves, just as He is pure. Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. One of the most meaningful days on the church's calendar is All Saints Day. In the United States, we generally do not observe All Saints Day unless it falls on a Sunday. The eve of All Saints Day has been preempted into a major national celebration that we know as Halloween. But the church continues to preserve the tradition of of observing the first Sunday of November, as a time to remember those who have made the transition from the church here on earth to the church triumphant in heaven. And so it occurs to me that every funeral, every memorial service, every graveside service is an All Saints celebration, a remembrance. And while there are so many texts that speak to the occasion, including uh, each text read today, the one that has always been my favorite is John's telling of the raising of Lazarus. It still represents one of the most challenging texts in all of Scripture, but one of the most hopeful as well. 
This dramatic account occurs only in John's gospel. There are other stories of Jesus raising people from the dead, Jairus' daughter, for example, the widow's son at Nain, but these miraculous events occurred shortly after a death. We can imagine that these individuals might have been in a trance or something even like a coma. But in the case of Lazarus, we have a story of a person who has been in the grave for several days. The reaction of the people to this incredible, incredible miracle was electrifying. Many believe that the raising of Lazarus from the dead was the principal reason the authorities determined that Jesus must be put to death. I don't know about you, but sometimes it feels as though today we don't know what to do about death. Since World War I, new churches uh, were rarely designed with cemeteries for burials. Cemeteries are now located outside of town or on the outskirts of town. Indeed, the trend is toward now memorial parks where graves have no headstones to disrupt the horizon and the park itself looks more like a nature preserve or golf course than a place of burial. In fact, in contemporary America, we do all we can, it seems, to avoid death. Funerals have become less and less common, and if there is a time of remembrance at all, we often discourage crying, opting instead for what we call celebrations of life, preferring a good laugh over a good cry. We treat grief as though it were a psychological disorder. Nowhere is the failure of our death-denying society more apparent than when teenagers gather to mourn the death of a friend. Nothing prepares young people for the dynamics of grieving. The church, however, is different. Look at us today. For all the silly things that the church does and has done, here's one time where what we do makes sense. We dare to proclaim, along with Jesus, that blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. These words from the Beatitudes of Jesus challenge us to stand up in the midst of a death-denying society and say it is reasonable to mourn, and it is equally appropriate to give thanks for the lives of those who have blessed our lives, encouraged us, moved us, inspired us, even though they are no longer with us. And so we too grieve, but never like those who have no hope. As we remember those who have died, we acknowledge that we are diminished because they are not with us. But we also celebrate that we are also greater because we have been graced by their companionship. And so today, in honor and in memory of our loved ones who've gone on to the church triumphant, we boldly proclaim that we need not fear nor deny death. After all, physical death is a part of the natural order of things. The mortality of the human race is still 100%. But that's all right. We have our Lord's promise that the relationship we have with God in this life will continue into the next. What is more, we are confident that we will be united with those whom we have known and loved in this life. We cannot prove that, but we need not to. Prior to the act of calling Lazarus to come out of the tomb, Jesus spoke words to Mary, Lazarus' sister, that continue to give us great hope. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. These are words of blessed assurance to those of us who know that one day we must all die. Like Lazarus' sisters, we pray that some power will protect us, but we know that nothing will prevent this one great common reality that shall touch us all. And so today we are reminded to place our confidence and trust in our loving Savior, who promised that nothing would ever separate us from him. In that faith and in that trust, I think we can accept whatever is to come in our lives, including that time when we, too, shall make our own transfer from the ranks of the church on earth to the church triumphant in heaven. Barbara Brown Taylor, one of my favorite preachers and storytellers, tells the story of a young man who was struggling to come to grips with the death of several close friends in his life. As he grieved, an experience from his childhood came to his mind. He told Taylor that when he was a child, he used to go down to a nearby river with some older boys, and he would stand there on the edge of that river, and he would watch these boys swing far out over the fast-moving water on a rope that had been tied to the branch of a tree above. He watched them arc across the sky and then let go of the rope at just the right time, falling into the river below. 
Eventually their heads would break the surface and they would swim back to the shore with one giant gasp of air. The older boys urged him to do it. He reached out and grasped the rope, got a running start, and he swung far out over the water. At the height of his ride, he willed his hands to let go of the rope, but they would not. He was paralyzed by fear. He had watched the other boys do it, but he could not comprehend what gave them the ability to let go of that rope. So he hung there until the others pulled him back to the riverbank. It took many attempts before the boy was able to let go, but when he did it, he, it was because of his friends and their support. They had gone ahead of him, he said. I had watched each of them let go, and finally I just made up my mind that if they could do it, I could do it too. So eventually he opened his hands and he let go, because he wanted to join those who had gone before him. Today we are reminded that we place our faith in the great cloud of witnesses we call the communion of saints. Like the boys who drop from the rope into the water, these saints have gone before us. So in faith, we know that we are never alone. And though our relationship with those whom we have known and loved is changed, we are not separated from them. We have the best of their example, the seeds, if you will, of their inspiration, and the challenge to greatness that was their greatest gift to us. Every one of us gathered today in our living rooms or wherever you may be watching, possess an absence and void in our lives where a loved one once lived. And while it still hurts, it is, an, it is comforting to think of our loved ones, not as the dead, but as the ones who have let go of the rope. We miss our loved ones and we mourn them, but we also cherish their memory and we gain strength from all that we recall. If we weep, we do not weep like those who have no hope. The promise we have received is that we do not have to remain in fear and distress and anxiety. God has turned toward us and in the radiance of God's presence, we have confidence to face whatever the future will hold. It was no mistake that Jesus reminded us that blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Amen. Oh 
Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of all the saints, we praise you for evangelists and martyrs who sacrifice as witness to your gospel across time and space. Inspire us by their courage to carry our faith to new people in places around us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every place, the universe proclaims your greatness from generation to generation. Bless the work of naturalists conservationists, and park rangers who train our attention to the wonders of the world you have made. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of every nation, guide this country, red states and blue states, rural voters and urban voters, young and old, as we share in another national election. Kindle hearts eager to understand our common needs and seek our common good. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of every blessing, your son's blessing came to those living with poverty, grief, hunger, thirst, and persecution. Shape our vision of the saints to match his own. Awaken in us your call to serve all who suffer. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of every venture, anoint us with the missionary spirit of the early church. Bless all new missions of our synod. Empower testimony from new communities of faith to shape a diverse witness to your saving power. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every time, countless are the multitudes you have called by name and gathered to yourself. Comfort us as we grieve those who have died in the past year, including those we name aloud or in the silence of our heart. Paula Alm. Barbara Anderson. Clarine Johnson. In faith, may we join with them in ceaseless praise. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our privilege and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the witness of your saints, you show us the hope of our calling and strengthen us to run the race set before us, that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with them in glory. And so with Paula Alm, Barbara Anderson, and Clarine Johnson, and all the saints, with the choirs of angels and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. In the night of which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim Christ's death until he comes again. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the fruits of God for the people of God. Come to the table. All are welcome, for the gifts of God are free. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. the 
Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.